First thing, let me just apologize for the quality of this video. I'm actually out right now and I'm not gonna have time to make my proper videos that I normally do for my office with probably sound better, they probably look better. Um, but I wanted to talk about the Sony A6500 that was just announced today. I was thinking about it while I was driving and just thought I'd share some of my thoughts since I'm not gonna have uh, time to make a video uh, today at least and I'll, maybe I'll make a follow-up video talking about some of the specs and features and maybe more like technical information but the first thing I kind of want to talk about is has Sony betrayed or backstabbed their customers by releasing the a6500 so close after the a6300 now I don't know how familiar you are with these cameras but basically the Sony a6300 is a really popular camera it's an APS-C camera and uh, mirrorless like you know the Sony e-mount cameras are and a thousand dollars so great little camera for shooting 4k video you got that nice APS-C super 35 sensor and just takes really clean photos like a 24 megapixel sensor great camera in fact my brother actually bought one because he was so excited about having it and it, it shoots some great stuff uh, it does have some issues with overheating and rolling shutter as many people have pointed out in the past but by all accounts this is is a, a very nice camera at least for for some uses not great for everything but some uses really popular camera so sony releases the a6300 and less than a year later uh, essentially it's been you know six eight seven eight months they released the A6500, the sequel, the update, the next generation, whatever you want to call it. And it's essentially the exact same thing uh, with the main benefit, or one of the main benefits being that it has five axis stabilization internal on the camera now. So the sensor stabilizes and compensates for any extra movement, which is a great feature to have for photos and for video. They also increase the price. $400 extra for the A6500. So both these cameras are still available and you could buy one or the other, but a lot of people are now talking about the A6500 being clearly better and if it solves the overheating and the rolling shutter problems, which that's possible. Uh, I wouldn't uh, expect it though. You know, maybe maybe it'll be a nice surprise if that, that isn't an issue anymore. But what I want to talk about is the the betrayal or backstabbing nature of a company releasing one product and then less than a year later releasing kind of a follow-up, kind of in some ways screwing over all the people who bought the first product, or at least that's how it's perceived, right? People say like, well, I just bought the A6300 and you know, a lot of people don't buy cameras right at release. They wait a couple months, see how the reviews come in, see if there's any problems, and then they buy it and then all of a sudden, boom, there's this new camera. So is what do I think about all this? Well, I think it, it kind of sucks for the people who bought the A6300. I asked my brother about it, if he if he had any regrets or what he thought of the new one. And he seemed, I, I don't know if he had any specific thoughts to share, but he basically seemed a little defeated, maybe a little disappointed that he bought the A6300 and now there's the A6500. But what I want to caution against is, is, is the whole attacking Sony or yelling betrayal or the fact that this is you know somehow this new product you know makes the old one like not as good or, or whatever it was because at the end of the day ultimately if you're going to spend a thousand dollars on a camera and you look at the camera and you look at the specs and you say it's worth it as many people did in the a6300 case you can't look at the a6500 and then say oh that thousand dollars wasn't worth it you might be a little disappointed if you just bought it and now there's this other option. Hopefully maybe you can return it or you maybe sell it secondhand and make some of your money back. But I think there's, you know, just because something new comes out doesn't mean the old thing is all of a sudden garbage. So that's first and foremost. I feel like there's a lot of people on YouTube, the moment something new comes out, they get really excited about it. And yes, it's great and all the cool new features and five axis stabilization, but that doesn't mean that the old stuff is garbage. The old stuff is still still does everything it used to do when you first bought it. It just looks a little less in comparison maybe, but nothing was taken away from you. So if you spent $1,000, you, you still got what you paid for. Now, the other thing, the other component of this, there's this duality that people want. They wanna make sure that their investment is protected, but they want new technology to come so that they can buy it. So the, the nature of this is right is like you want a camera that can shoot higher frame rates or has better dynamic range or just better in low light. You want, you want, you want, you want all these things. You want a company to come out with a camera. But the moment that camera comes out, if another one comes out that's better, 
Well, you want to protect your investment and feel like you got the best thing and all of a sudden you don't have the best thing anymore. So this happens with cameras, with phones, with drones, with lights, with, with pretty much any electronic thing because it just keeps getting better and better and sometimes faster and faster. You know, less than a year, that's a pretty quick turnaround for a product cycle. So I, I don't uh, disparage Sony at all for, for releasing it. Yes, it's unfortunate for the people who bought it, but I think that's kind of the nature of, uh, of the beast. And if you're looking at it and you are upset with the $1,000 you spent on the A6300, that's probably a good sign that you may have made that purchase when you didn't need to. You know, a lot of times people buy things because they think they need it or they really want it. And then something new comes out and it's immediately a buyer's remorse. Like you, you regret that decision because you didn't pay it off or you didn't get your money's worth out of it. You know, if you eight months ago bought an A6300 and used it and made money off of it and you, you maybe you started a YouTube channel or you did whatever it was you did with the camera, hopefully you feel like you got your money's worth out of it. If you didn't do all that stuff, then maybe you do have that buyer's remorse and you do regret it a little bit. I personally appreciate Sony just keeping the updates coming because it allows us to move technology forward and, and get access to all these great products faster and faster. So anyone who didn't buy the A6300 because they maybe didn't have everything they wanted or they were waiting for the stabilization, well now they have the A6500 that they can buy and they can determine if it's worth the extra $400 that they'll have to spend to get that camera or if they wanna pick up an A6300 because now those are even maybe a little cheaper now that you know there's maybe a used market for them. So I think we have to be careful on, you, you know, you, on one hand, you have to understand the people who feel disappointed, who have that buyer's remorse maybe a little bit or feel slighted by Sony. Understand that. Okay, that's, that's fine. But hopefully they got their money's worth. And then on the other side, don't push on Sony or any of these companies too hard because the moment you say, hey, that is you know, too big of an upgrade or you, you move that too fast and you uh, negated my, my purchase, well, that disincentivizes all these companies from doing that. And I think ultimately that's what we want. We want companies to keep pushing things forward, making bigger and better things for all of us to buy and get you know, get the benefits out of. You know, I want, uh, you know, the GH4 to have the GH5 and then the GH6 and all these cameras to come later because hopefully they'll have upgrades. Now, is it going to be unfortunate if they release them too quickly? Well, you know, maybe, but that's, that's kind of the uh, the name of the game and if as long as you're making purchases and you know that you're either going to make money or you're going to get your money's worth out of the thing you bought um, that's going to protect you from feeling that that regret or that buyer's remorse when something new comes out you know same thing with laptops or with game consoles or any anything right cars whatever it is if you make the purchase intentionally and you commit and you understand that I'm going to spend X number of dollars and I'm gonna get these features or I'm gonna get this product and you're okay with that, mentally okay with it, even if something new comes out in two or three months, then you've made your piece and the new thing comes out and you can maybe buy that one day or wait for the next generation, whatever it might be. And I, I there is a benefit to being an early adopter, getting things early so you have a longer period of time with it. There's a lot of people now who've been asking me, you know, should I buy a GH4 or wait for a GH5? You know, if you need a GH4, go ahead and buy a GH4 if you need it. But if you just want a camera, you probably should wait for the GH5. But if you were in that position two, three years ago when the GH4 came out, you could have had that camera for that entire period of time, gotten to use it, and then the next one comes out and maybe it's a, a good upgrade if it has everything you want. So it's always this double-edged sword, no matter what. You either wait too long or you don't wait enough. and. Ultimately, at the end of the day, you just have to be happy and committed to the purchases you make. And, you know, it, it, companies are going to do what they're going to do. Sony's going to keep releasing cameras, thankfully, and they keep adding all these awesome features to their cameras, making me want to buy them. And they, they have their problems. You know, as I mentioned, the overheating, the rolling shutter, not a huge fan of their, the battery life, the battery performance on a lot of those cameras is not that great. But, you know, they keep adding all these awesome features. So, you know, at one at some point, I'll probably buy a Sony camera. Maybe we'll see, but don't uh, don't scream betrayal just too too quickly or, or push on Sony too hard. You know, I, I think it's awesome what they're doing. I think they're pushing technology forward, and hopefully, 
if you bought an A6300, you got your money's worth out of it, and uh, you have the A6500 to consider.